Thank you. Hi, and good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. But before I actually start, I would like to know something. Uh, if you recognize the name, blog series, What's Up Home, and been reading my posts, please raise your hand. Oh, surprisingly many. Thank you. Now I can show to my wife back at home that at least one guy did do that. <laughs> so, who am I? I'm Janne, or Sean, Jane, Janni, Janni, depending who is trying to pronounce my name. And I, like I said, I come from Finland. I've been doing IT over 20 years for a living, and I've been over 8.5 years at Forcepoint. We are a global cybersecurity company with most demanding customers you can imagine of governments, armies, uh, factories, biggest enterprises, you can find uh, hospitals, you name it. So if you need cybersecurity for big boys, go check us out. I'm not a sales guy, and I'm here any, anyway as my own self today, even though, I, even though I work for Forcepoint, and I'm going to tell you how I'm monitoring my home with Jabbix and why I'm doing it. So how did it start? It did actually start back in March. We had a little incident. We have this uh, full-size uh, freezer with a power button in its front panel. So probably during dusting, my wife did accidentally turn off the freezer, and we did only notice it two days later, and we had to throw away, throw away so much food. So at that point, I decided we need to monitor it. It. So then I did start writing about this monitoring project to LinkedIn, thinking that nobody would read it. So it was only for my fo own fun. And that was the case for the first three entries, which were very boring. Then my wife came up with an idea for the post number four, accidentally. I think she was thinking she's being funny or something when she told me that uh, I would like to know how often you remember to use your facial cream. You know, if I don't use it daily, I will get dry skin here. <laughs> so, monitoring nerd doesn't take those ideas lightly. I will tell you later how I did monitor that. But <laughs> anyway, that's how this all started. Well, there must be other reasons why I'm using Zybix at home, right? So, we've had this uh, home automation device or IoT hub Cosify since 2017 or so. It's a handy device because it can uh, make IoT products from different vendors to work together. Let's say a movement sensor by Nexa would detect movement, then cause if I could tell my Philips Hue lights that please turn on, something like that. Uh, it's great for that kind of home automation, but it completely lacks in reporting or historical data or anything. And of course, as a nerd, I would like to see temperature graphs, uh, how many hours we have been uh, turning or, or have had our lights on, stuff like that. And because I've been doing IT monitoring, IT monitoring over 20 years, it's something I really do know already. I have kind of seen it all, but monitoring the real world is a different case. So this is fun exercise for me and stupid play, but through it I will learn so many new things which I can now then share to all of you to maybe give you new, some actual serious new ideas for your work. And then we also do have other IoT devices not connected with Cosify. All of them do have their own uh, applications or other uh, use, use, user interfaces anyway. So I would like to have a single user interface for everything because you can see there's so many user interfaces. But with Zabbix, I can have single user interface for everything, which is really helpful. Uh, fun thing, uh, one of the Zabbix employees did ask about the bottom left corner widgets that is the, some kind of custom widget. No, it's using plain text widget with value mapping. So value mapping is replacing some numeric values with uh, check marks or red cross or something. So that's a handy way to visualize plain text widget. Well, benefits of running Zabbix at home. 
of course, well, that one true interface. Then I can set up some alarms in Cosify, but configuring those is not fun. Uh, with Subix, of course, creating alerts is easy. And I can create all kind of detailed dashboards about anything I would like to know. Uh, and also using Zabbix with my Raspberry Pi, it further increases the IoT devices support I can monitor and control with you using just computer. So Cosify has a decent support for all kind of devices, but for example with Bluetooth devices, Raspberry Pi is much, much better. So how did I integrate Cosify and Zabbix? Uh, there's two product lines with Cosify. One is for pro customers, and then there's the customer line, uh, or consumer line. And with the consumer line, they don't offer official API, at least that I don't know about. But someone has made an unofficial uh, Cosify API implementation. It's not perfect, but it works good enough for me because I can read data using that. Because I don't want to make our Cosify slow or buggy by doing too many requests with, I'm only, or my scripts are only pulling it every five minutes. So that's frequent enough so uh, we get uh, good data about our home, but uh, that's not too often to bother Cosify in any way. Well, then my scripts uh, are saving the data to text files with Zabbix system parsing. So pretty standard stuff. So example script, very simplified. Just import the library, authenticate against the uh, Cosify, and then get whatever info you want. Like in this example, uh, see for all the devices Cosify has connected with, uh, are they reachable or not. And then with Zabbix dependent items, I can then, uh, with, with a single request, I can then get uh, status for like 40 devices. So that's handy. So some dashboards. This is the same one you already saw. So overview of our home. Uh, that page actually goes much <laughs> more down, but I didn't take more screenshots than this first page. And then I can, of course, make all these beautiful graphs about everything. There's my home router and it's, <laughs> it's um, how many megabits are going in and out. Uh, then all kind of temperatures, humidities, all the other metrics. But I didn't stop to standard stuff. I did actually uh, integrate Zabbix with Blender 3D software. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so I can, uh, uh, this is a static image. Uh, Blender has a Python API, so that's a nice way to render scene in real time and then save it. But that, that's a static image. But I can also browse around in virtual 3D. Imagine being at home and surfing around your home in 3D. Yeah, we'll get to this later. There's, there's actual use cases for this. Not for me, but <laughs> someone else. <laughs> then MQTT support in Zabbix allows me to observe and control our AC. Uh, Cosify couldn't do this, but with Zabbix and Raspberry Pi, it was well, like 30 minutes job, even though I didn't have any previous experience about MQTT. No. Next, let's move on to some useful examples. So I've been writing like over 20 entries already to my blog series, but here's some examples of what I'm monitoring with Zabbix. Definitely not your IT. <laughs> so let's start with the obvious one. This, this was the one that made me Zabbix celebrity. <laughs> so with this door sensor, look, it's beautiful, beautiful brown because that Brown tape is still <laughs> sticky here. But it, 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 it's easy to work with. 
when these magnetic pieces are together, something is closed. When they are separate, something is open. So I did put my facial cream inside that box. And whenever the box is closed, uh, well, it's closed. When I open it, then a timer or timestamp in Zabbix item gets updated. So it knows that, OK, Janne at least opened the box. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't know for sure if I did apply the cream, but at least it knows the box was opened. So, <laughs> so if I don't use that cream in 12 hours, uh, I will get an alert. If, uh, if it goes 13 hours, then my wife gets a notification. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Suski, you're famous. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's, of course, real-world use cases. This is all for my facial cream, but uh, imagine your grandma. Did she take her, her medicines? You could monitor that. Or that could be monitored in hospitals or wherever. Or it could be for your safety. If you have a safe and your safe gets opened when you are not near it, you have a problem. Or it could be for convenience. If you have an AC, like we do, and during hot summer day you open the door for maybe longer than two minutes, Zabbix can then automatically turn off the AC. And then when you again, again close the door, it can then put the AC back on. Simple. Well, then this one is unfortunately a bit sad. Our Lily did pass away back in August, but I did leave this here just to respect her memory. So with another interesting device, Rubitag, this is like 30, 40 euros environmental monitoring thing, a Bluetooth beacon which is constantly telling out loud that this is the temperature, humidity, air pressure, and it also has movement sensors. So there's also a command called, called Blue Walker. It, it has native support for parsing uh, Rubitax values, so that's why it's uh, so handy to use with Zabbix because Blue Walker returns the values in easy format for Zabbix to parse. So then it saves the uh, data to log file, which Zabbix is then reading, so I get real time results. Uh, well, Lily had a very luxury bed, so we wanted to know how many hours she, she spends in that bed. So, of course, when a dog goes to bed, it's more warm than without the dog. So I did <laughs> guesstimate all this with uh, just using temperature graph. <laughs> so you can see she went to her bed every night and did pretty much stay there all over. But then during the day, she wasn't there that much. And I had those triggers which didn't send any alerts. But then I could see from alert history <laughs> what's going on. So yeah, again, real world use cases. If your grandma is uh, like usually waking up 7 a.m., but some morning she would still be in her bed 8.30, should someone go and check if, if she's OK or not. Or of course, you could monitor everything from ice cream truck to whatever has to keep temperature within some range to be OK. Then. Again, uh, using the very same Ruvitag, I tried to monitor our uh, very dumb <laughs> robot, robot vacuum cleaner. It's a base model. It doesn't have any kind of IoT or Wi-Fi or other connectivity. Uh, but with Ruvi's uh, movement sensors, I was able to see how long uh, this device is moving. So stupid, but in real world, you could easily monitor this way if, if something that should be moving, like conveyor belt, is moving, or something that should not be moving, like that safe, <laughs> <laughs> is not moving. Or you could verify that something that is moving is really moving at the speed it should be moving. So now the 3D part. <laughs> uh, I'm not a 3D artist, but so I did cheat a little bit by using this easy to use home modeling software. It's easier to my back anyway when my wife asks how would, how would, how would the sofa look like on that wall. Anyway, it, it got, it's got 
plenty of pre-made furniture and it's quite easy to use. And then I did save the file in object format, which is recognized by Blender. Then inside Blender, I did then tag all the interesting items with the same names that I have in Zabbix. So that way I can, my Python script can then call Blender that, hey, change the color of this and that to be something else and then render the scene. And then it will, then it will upload the files back to my Raspberry Pi. It has a separate directory for these 3D files and then with just, just the standard Zabbix URL widget, I'm showing the image and also the uh, VR, uh, virtual reality version. Yeah, well, that's very simple Python script out there. So just import the Blender uh, library and then change some variables of the scene and well, set the resolution for the image and write the file out and then that's it pretty much. So in real world, this could be very useful because imagine if electrician or plumber or guard or medic, who, whoever would need to go somewhere where they don't go that often, it's much easier to find your <laughs> target if your alert would contain 3D image or maybe animation, where to go. Or uh, likewise, a call center could tell the field personnel where they should be heading. And for sysadmins, if you can visualize your data center, so you, so you could then see the failing device location much more easily. Also useful if you have to go to data center where you don't go very often. Uh, I did also integrate Zabbix with an IoT remote. These <laughs> IoT remotes are uh, quite handy. They uh, are operating on some 400 33 megahertz frequency, and you don't have to point them to some exact location. No, they, in fact, they work in like 100 meters range from our Cosify. So in my case, I just made um, a test if this works at all. So if I press button number one, Zabbix receives value number one. If I push number two, it receives number two, and so forth. Uh, so I made a graph on a dashboard. Yes, this is Zabbix Summit, but uh, it's uh, fantastic that Zabbix works so well with other software too. So in graph on a dashboard, I did show some you know, short messages. Help, out of beer, dinner is ready. So our living room TV could show <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, that's not useful at all. And I did, really didn't use that uh, apart from just out of curiosity. But again, imagine in real world, if you have like a factory with old mechanical devices with no smart connectivity whatsoever, but you could then place some kind of IoT push button. Those are like 20, 20 euros next to device. So when someone is patrolling then the factory or whatever and sees something not working, they could push the button and trigger an alert, an alert on Zabbix that way. So that's already more handy. And finally, uh, controlling our AC through Zabbix MQTT support. Uh, like I said, I'm not an MQTT expert. Uh, this was my first time touching it in any way. So I did install Mosquito MQTT broker. So it took like 30 minutes for me to configure after reading how it works. And then it recognized our AC. And then from that point, I was able to start reading stuff using Zabbix. Uh, I could be wrong, but in my, it feels to me that Zabbix can only read MQTT stuff. But for writing, there's a mosquito pub, pub command included with mosquito broker. So with that, I can do write operations. So I can set fan speed, temperature, power status, everything through Zabbix. And then I just created a menu to Zabbix. So from there, I can then pick whatever things I want. And other stuff I have tried out. Interesting ones, Philips one plate, one plate shaver, uh, runtime estimate based on audio frequency. <laughs> then 
I know my boss is watching this, so I'm, I'm using also work Jabbix through Siri sometimes <laughs> for some basic stuff. Uh, then uh, I tend to use lots of music, no, I listen to lots, lots of music during my work day, so I wanted to know how many hours I'm actually listening to music. Uh, my headset provides 40 hours of charge they claim with a single charge, and I wanted to see if that's accurate. Well, it seems I'm listening about 33 hours per week, 33 hours per week, so that's quite a lot. So, would I, do, would, would I do this again? Of course I would. <laughs> because, well, first of all, this gives me peace of mind because now I know that freezer, <laughs> that if it's okay. I know if uh, our smart fire alarm battery is going to die. I know all kind of safety related stuff now much better. I also do know so much more about our home, about its temperatures, about light status, and also about the reliability of our IoT devices. I don't know, for example, if it's a bug or a feature, but many of our thermometers apparently go unavailable every now and then, but then when temperature changes, they come back. So maybe they enter some kind of power save mode, I, don't, I wouldn't know, but that's an example I have only learned only by Japix. And I've, I have learned so much about monitoring the real world and will continue doing so. And of course, for it to lead to this situation where I'm speaking in, all front, front, all, in front of all of you, it makes this so much more awesome. So, if you want to know more, go read the official Zapix blog, or there's something in, on my GitHub there's not everything I would like to be there because we have an eight weeks old baby at home, so that like steals our time quite a little bit, but I'm trying to upload more when I have the time. And if you want, connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you. Nope, 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 just wait. Okay. Uh, thank you for your absolutely great and fresh perspective on Zabbix monitoring. And everyone is very interested uh, how uh, deep your uh, wife is involved in all those projects. Does she assist or give you ideas or maybe something else? Uh, she gives me ideas mostly ac by accident. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she now knows what's what's Tabix, and she is actually like uh, telling me that it would be nice to know that, hey, uh, what's temperature in our garage? Because we have some stuff we, which cannot survive in cold environment or something like that. So actually one of my blog posts did include like that, hey, thanks to Tabix, we did decide that we don't put some stuff to our garage, instead we um, keep it at, inside our house. house. <laughs> Thank you. And a bit more technical question. Uh, why did you decide to use a temperature center to check if a uh, dog is basically in her bed, not just an example, a simple pressure sensor? I don't have pressure sensor. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>